Raven Elise TV. Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven and today I'm here with a chit chat get ready with me video. I'm sorry in advance if this video is super long and you don't like long videos. Hopefully there's other shorter videos on my channels that you can enjoy. But I do know that a lot of you guys do really enjoy my long chatty videos where I'm just kind of openly talking to you guys. And also this video was very, very requested. So the topic that I'm gonna be discussing while I'm doing my makeup today is going to be kind of an update on my anxiety and depression. I've talked about mental health and anxiety and depression and all those things on my channel several times before. I'm pretty open about it and it's something that I think is important. So I try to touch on it here and there whenever I can. But you guys did have some specific questions for me and kind of some follow-up questions. So I wanted to do this video and make it kind of interesting by doing makeup during it. I guess that makes it a little bit more interesting. So I'm gonna try and keep the makeup talk to a minimum because I already know I have so much to say on this actual anxiety depression topic, but I am gonna be showing you guys the products as I use them. Just to start off with, I know people are gonna ask about my headband. I wore this on Instagram Live last week whenever I was doing makeup on Instagram Live and so many people were asking me where I got this headband from and unfortunately I do not know it came in a PR package that I got and I have some kind of newish products that I've gotten in PR that I've been kind of trying out and wanting to try. First thing I'm just going to put on is this lip plumper by Rodeo. This is their Dragon's Blood Double XL lip plumper and I tried this once before. It smells really good. And then next to prep my skin, I'm going to go in with two different serums. This one is by Glossier. It is their super pure serum. This is helping with redness and to calm down your breakouts. And then this one is by The Body Shop. It is a youth concentrate. But yeah, so basically a quick little backstory on me and I guess my mental health in general is I've always, as basically as long as I can remember, I've struggled with depression and anxiety, social anxiety, separation anxiety, all different types of anxieties. And I mostly am like kind of self-diagnosed and self-taught when it comes to this whole topic. So I don't want you guys to take this as like facts or, you know, just run with my advice or take my experience as just like, I don't know, like I don't, I don't fully always know what I'm talking about. Like I'm not an expert on this subject. I'm not a doctor. I can just tell you what I know from my own experience. Um, but I definitely have seen doctors. I have seen therapists and counselors and stuff. So I have experienced that side of it as well. I can't tell you how I was feeling when I was like five, six, seven, eight years old. I don't remember that. That's too long ago. I don't have that great of a memory, but I do remember being in middle school like going into middle school definitely middle school and definitely high school and from there on out i do remember struggling okay quickly for a primer i'm going to use this oh no me powerful priming serum it is a tone corrector radiance booster i think this is more of like a high-end product so i'm going to use this as like my primer but yeah basically as far back as i can remember which is basically middle school i've always known that there was kind of something wrong or i was feeling low i was feeling depressed i had these anxieties and i had these issues that i always struggled with okay so the last two products that i think i really want to mention are two new purchases that i've recently purchased first one is a new foundation this is the lancome tint ideal ultra wear it's like their super full coverage foundation and i see a lot of youtubers using it and i wanted to try it out so this is a foundation i'm going to be using today it is in the color um 415 and then i also got a new setting powder by kat von d this is the locket setting powder so i wanted to try this because i ran out of my laura mercier setting powder that i always use so I just got this translucent setting powder and this foundation. Other than products that I'm gonna be using today are pretty much gonna be stuff that you've probably seen me use before, but I will try to list products down below. But I think from here on out, I'm just gonna like do my makeup and not explain the products just so I can, you know, talk. So yeah, basically what I'm trying to say is that this is not a new thing for me. It's not something that just popped up in college or just popped up ever since I was pregnant or anything like that. It's basically been like for as long as I can remember. And I have done different things over time to try and deal with it. I've tried a bunch of different routes, but it's just always an everyday struggle. It gets better at times. I go through different phases. I go through some really, really bad phases where different things are triggering me. And then I go through really good times when I'm like, I haven't been feeling bad at all but it's definitely been an up and down roller coaster the whole entire time so it's not really just been 
you know something that I found one cure for and it's done like it's it's an everyday struggle and I feel like it's like that for everyone um, it's not gonna be cured overnight it's not just gonna disappear and go away completely it's gonna be an everyday struggle and you're gonna have to learn different things that work for you just to cope with it and one thing that I do want to go ahead and get out of the way in the beginning of this video is to just remind you or let you know that I am not religious I don't go to church I never have been religious I definitely have been exposed to religion I've been exposed to Christianity I've been exposed to actually a bunch of different religions before I you know it's not something that I'm ignorant to but it's something that I've chosen I guess you could say chosen not to participate in it just wasn't forced upon me so it's never been my lifestyle and of course as an adult I make my own decisions anyway and it's just not I don't know it just doesn't I don't know this is something that's really hard to explain because there kind of is no explanation behind it and I kind of feel like I shouldn't have to explain it but all you need to know is that I'm not religious I don't pray I don't go to church I don't follow any certain anything and I don't mean to offend anybody or make it seem like religion is a bad thing or being spiritual is a bad thing or being a Christian is a bad thing because it's not almost everyone I know is a Christian almost everyone I'm friends with is a Christian and goes to church and is very involved so it's not something that I look down upon at all but something that I do not agree with and do kind of look down upon is when people dismiss mental health for religious reasons I think that can be very unhealthy and just problematic and just not helpful at all I think that religion and spirituality and praying and whatever you know going to church being in church groups those things can be very very helpful I've heard plenty of people say how it has changed their life how it has made all the difference but it does not work for everyone point blank it does not work for everyone you are going to come across people who say that it has had the complete opposite effect on them that it has ruined their life that it has stressed them out even more so you cannot just throw that on people and say you need to read the bible you need to go to church you need to join this religion you need to be a christian you need to accept jesus into your life and if you want to suggest it and they want to take your suggestion and it ends up working out perfect fantastic that's great but it just does not work for everyone. You cannot keep trying to force, you know, you just can't keep trying to force it. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. I'm not a closed-minded person, I promise you. I'm not a closed-minded person. I will try anything once. Whether it comes to curing my acne or curing my depression, I will try anything once. I do listen to people's suggestions and I do always, you know, try to be open to new things, but just because something worked for you, just like with acne products, just because something worked for you, does not mean it's going to work for the next person. And I think sometimes people get offended, like, well, it worked so well for me. You're not listening to me. You're not doing it. Like, you need to do this. It's going to change your life. And it's like, that's you, girl. Like, that, it's, we're not the same person. But different things that I have tried are things like going to a counselor, going to therapy. I've been to a bunch of different therapists, a bunch of different counselors, different types of therapists and counselors that kind of approach things differently. Um, I also looked into things like changing your diet, changing your overall lifestyle, changing things that you may not think have anything to do with it, but actually do, and going to a holistic doctor who can look more into your body as a whole and how it relates to your mental health. So I've done stuff like that. Um, I've also done um, like family therapy type of stuff and working with loved ones and talking to your family and talking to your friends and just opening up, just talking to somebody in general, honestly. And I also did for a moment basically consider going down like the medication route, but that ended up being something I did not want to do. So I never really um, did that for very long at all. But what I did do was for a while I was taking hella vitamins and supplements. So kind of like a more natural medication type of thing. I've also done like exercises that you do at home like self affirmations and journaling. And then also things like meditation and things from a more not religious but spiritual standpoint. Um, and you know listening to certain videos and um, podcasts or audiobooks and kind of like self-help type stuff and reading stuff like that so basically anything you can think of that you could use as a coping mechanism or something to help 
with anxiety or depression, I have tried it at least once. And again, I've been going through this process and dealing with this for at least the past 10 years, if not longer. So another thing that I know people wanna know in terms of like my backstory is where exactly does my depression and anxiety even stem from in the first place? What caused it? Did I have a traumatic experience? Like where does it all come from? Cause I know a lot of people, they have PTSD, they have experienced something very major, very traumatic in their life. And then kind of all of a sudden they had depression or anxiety. That's really not the case for me, at least not as far as I know. I know sometimes things happen in your childhood that you literally cannot and do not remember. And that could have been where something came from. As far as I know, that didn't happen to me. As far as I know, it's just been kind of something that I've just always genetically had and always dealt with. And I do have a genetic predisposition to experience these things because it does run in my family. I do have family members who suffer with other mental health issues and it can be genetic. It can just be in your DNA. But I do also have triggers and certain events or things that'll pop up that will trigger it and make it worse. So for me, I feel like what can really trigger it is any type of conflict, which I know is really vague, but like, Anytime something bad happens, like if I get extremely stressed out about something or extremely sad about something that just happened, for example, I get in a huge fight with one of my friends or family members or boyfriend or I go through a breakup or I find out I'm failing one of my classes, Dude, like any kind of like moment that happens in your life where it's like shit, like I'm freaking out, I don't know what to do or I'm very sad about this or very upset about this. For me, what happens is instead of just being sad about it in the moment or just being sad about that one thing and then getting over it, working through it, whatever, it's fine the next day. For me, I go into a spiraling depression or I have a panic attack. So something can start off by just really not being that big of a deal, but the way my head works is I start layering things. I have this problem, then I start thinking about, remember when that other thing happened and what if this happens and what if that happens and remember this and you messed up on this thing too. And I just start going down the list of basically any negative thought, any negative memory, I just start making this huge list in my mind and basically it's blowing one problem up into a huge scenario putting myself into a panic, putting myself into a depression, and it is like physically, it just feels like this. Like I can't explain it, it just feels like the world is crashing down around you and you can't stop. It's like you wanna be positive, you wanna look at the bright side, you wanna get over it, but you can't stop thinking about every single negative thing that has ever happened in your life and it might sometimes it's not even my life it's like i start thinking about other people and my family members and my friends and my daughter and what if this happens to them and it just like sends me into a panic and a lot of times what can happen is i'm just sitting there thinking about it or talking about it or maybe trying to talk to my mom about it and all of a sudden i'll basically start having a panic attack because it's just like all these thoughts rush into my head and i start crying uncontrollably i start hyperventilating and i start feeling like i can't breathe and i have to like lay in bed for the rest of the day because it really physically takes a lot out of you i think people sometimes think that mental health is just mental but it's not it manifests physically as well it can make you feel physically sick physically tired make you feel like you can't breathe make you feel like your lungs and your heart and everything is not working properly and you can end up like literally sick in bed but yeah so there are several things that can trigger me there's several reasons why i might go into more of a depression or might have an anxiety attack or a panic attack and i have had several panic attacks before i didn't used to have panic attacks when i was younger it used to be at least not that i remember it used to be more of just an overall like like dragging depression like us like a more of just a heavy feeling throughout the whole day rather than like a crazy feeling all in one moment if that makes sense um, but late like more recently in the past couple of years is when I started having panic attacks but there's only ever been one time that I was actually taken to the hospital because of my panic attacks I know some people they have super super bad panic attacks that they just cannot handle or deal with on their own and they go to the hospital all the time for it and they're always being rushed to the emergency room that doesn't happen to me I've only been one time and that's when I had my worst panic attack ever and I made a whole video about this so if you have not seen it I will link it down below but I did kind of touch more on my whole entire hospital experience what was going on in that time of my life and what it was like in the hospital and what it was like in the inpatient mental health facility that I ended up being admitted into for an overnight inpatient 
situation and I was originally supposed to be in there for like over a week I think but I only ended up being in there for a few days because it was the worst experience of my entire life and like no shade or no not saying anything bad about anybody else who has been and has had a good experience but for me I had the worst experience of my entire life it was so not helpful and it was so it just made everything so much worse it made me panic 10 times more i felt like it just made everything worse and i had to get out of there and it was really hard to get out of there and i felt like my parents were breaking me out of jail but if you want to hear that whole story i will link that video down below and again that's just me personally you have to try things for yourself you have to test things on yourself before you can know how it's going to work for you but for me personally i had a very bad experience i know i'm layering on a lot of products because i just feel like i can't get my base to look how i want it to look so i'm like making it darker and contouring and now i'm going back and putting more highlight over it to counteract the darkness i just i don't know how i feel about this foundation it wasn't full cover so then i had to put stuff over it and then i had to we just struggling today y'all but we gonna try to pull it together okay so i feel like i've been talking for a long time already but i just kind of wanted to give you guys a little bit of a background story and some basic information about me and what i deal with um just so you can know where i'm coming from but i did ask you guys on twitter if you guys have more specific questions and topics that you wanted me to touch on so i'm going to answer those so somebody said i have anxiety what do you do to help with anxiety attacks and again, like I said, I have tried multiple things. I'll try anything once when it comes to coping or helping with anything. But lots of times I find that for me, it'll be like the most random, most simple thing that actually ends up helping me. So whenever I have a panic attack, one big thing that I have found that helps me actually calm down, catch my breath, get a grip. I'm bawling my eyes out. I'm hyperventilating. I can't breathe. I start getting very hot and overheated and it feels like I just got a fever instantly and I can start shaking and just really, really like hyperventilating. So what I find that really helps me to just instantly like get a grip is I go get a handful of ice from the freezer and I shove my mouth full of ice and it just like shocks my body and it cools me down and it calms me down and it just like just that shock of coolness like allows me to breathe and catch my breath and just like i don't know get back into reality so that's the first thing that i do to catch my breath and then from there to actually help me feel better i pretty much have to take the rest of the day off i have to just like calm down go you know get a snack get in bed cuddle with zaya or if it's after she's already gone to bed because a lot of things happen for me at like late at night when zaya's already asleep but um you know i'll get in bed i'll try to take a nap or go to sleep and typically it's hard for me to just fall asleep just like that so i have to have something to kind of help me fall asleep or just distract me so i always watch youtube videos or try to like watch like a disney movie like watch something that is definitely going to try to make you laugh and definitely be very just happy and carefree do not watch orange is the new black do not watch any kind of dramas or anything like that that's just going to put more negativity into your brain but watch something really funny and really happy and lighthearted or listen to the same type of music or something i always watch good mythical morning on youtube because it's just so funny and lighthearted, and it's just very comforting for me i literally just get in my covers turn on youtube get some snacks and just try to like relax and zone out into what i'm watching that way it takes my mind off of whatever it is that sent me into a panic and then the next day after i've had a time to calm down and sleep on it then i will think about you know reaching out to someone to try to talk about what i'm dealing with you know i'll call my mom and i'll say hey this happened i'm feeling really bad about this i need somebody to talk to i need to vent but i really don't want to just call someone and start venting right away when i'm freaking out because what's that gonna do you're in such a i don't know like a bad state that's not for me that's not really the best time to try to talk it through i would rather calm down first sleep on it and then try to talk about it and work through it the next day so then somebody asked how do i keep things from triggering my depression or anxiety and that's a very hard question because it's pretty much it's not completely possible you can't always avoid all of your triggers i know some people have very specific triggers and 
when your triggers are more specific it is easier to avoid because you know exactly what to avoid you know exactly where not to go who not to talk to what not to watch but when you have more vague triggers like me where basically anything negative or scary or stressful can trigger you you can't just fully avoid that I mean that's life there's always gonna be scary negative stressful things that pop up out of nowhere so it's more about coping with it is more important than avoiding it but of course you do want to avoid it as much as possible so for me I just try to avoid stress and drama I know that there are certain people in my life that are nothing but drama nothing but negativity so I try my best not to even talk to them respond to them or deal with them and also like something as simple as TV shows or movies I really do try not to watch those scary drama stress feel filled movies or TV shows because it like subliminally or subconsciously gets to me so there are certain shows that I like, like Orange is the New Black, and I really like Lock Up, uh, like the reality show about jail on Netflix. I don't know why I like these jail shows so much. So those are like the few shows that I can watch and like kind of be okay with. But for the most part, I do not watch thrilling dramas. I don't watch scary movies. I don't watch any of that type of stuff. I don't even watch people on YouTube who do like pranks and have a lot of drama on their channel. I can't do it because I don't I don't need that negativity in my life so I just try to avoid stuff like that as much as possible and like I said surround myself with funny stuff stupid stuff light-hearted stuff and sometimes it'll be childish stuff but that's what makes me feel better but there are also times when someone or like someone could be triggering you or saying or doing something that triggers you and they don't know it and they don't mean to and you might feel like oh I don't want to say anything to them I don't want to be mean but like tell them if, if your parents or your friends are saying something or doing something or bringing up something that's really triggering you you have to tell them like say hey I don't want to hear about that I don't want to hear about that person I don't want to hear about that story can you not say that stuff around me like you have to tell them then someone said do you feel like there are people that you can talk to about it if not how do you deal with it alone I feel like this is a big topic because a lot of people probably always feel like they don't have anyone to talk to especially when you're young because friendships can be really iffy when you're young or you feel like your parents don't understand you or maybe your parents are not even around or whatever the issue is it can be very hard to even have someone to talk to and I've struggled with that quite a bit myself even though I do have supportive parents in my life even though I have always had a best friend here and there even though I have had a boyfriend and everything like that sometimes even those people even my mom my best friend or my boyfriend at the time still didn't seem like they were someone that I could turn to or talk to for one reason or another either I feel like you're not going to understand me I feel like you don't want to hear it right now because you're dealing with your own issues or I don't really trust you because we're having relationship product problems or whatever it may be but first and foremost if you do feel like there is someone that you can turn to you have to really sit back and think like who cares about me who cares about me my mom cares about me my friends care about me this person cares about me they probably would not mind listening to me if I really need to vent you have to be honest with yourself about that and if you do have someone you can turn to be open to actually talking to them don't try to be too closed off don't you know don't just sit there and feel like you can deal with it alone because you can't if you have someone to talk to talk to them open up to them you'd be surprised how many people really are there for you if you actually give them a chance to be there for you if you actually let them know what you're going through because if you don't tell them they don't know you probably expect them to see it written on your face or they should be able to tell from this and that but people don't know like they're dealing with their own lives and personal issues you have to be very direct if you want someone to understand you so first and foremost try to talk to someone and if you don't have anyone to talk to try to talk to a professional a therapist a counselor lots of schools have counselors there for you to talk to for free whether you're in middle school high school or college a lot of times they will have a counselor to talk to so try that first if that doesn't work try to hire you know another professional look into it read reviews talk to other people who may have been to them before and if you don't want to go down that route then what I tend to do when I feel like I have no one to talk to is I talk to myself I talk to the camera I talk to my keyboard I talk to my phone typing it out or just saying it out loud there have been times when I literally go to the little voice memo thing on my phone where you can like record voicemails or whatever and I will just sit there and talk to it 
and then what I do is I listen to it and I it kind of gives clarity it kind of makes you realize okay I was overreacting about that one part that sounds kind of extra when I hear it out loud or okay that like I don't know something is just very helpful about just talking even if you're not talking to anyone it's just helpful to just literally say it out loud or at least write it down so keep a journal make a blog but just don't even make the blog public or whatever like you don't have to show anyone what you wrote or what you said just it's for you it's for you to read it's for you to get it out but I do think at some point you have to talk to someone to actually kind of get a different point of view on it and get some help with it so that's where talking to counselors talking to therapists or you know finally reaching out to your friends and family but the one thing that you can't do is just let yourself live in fear of judgment because I know that's a big thing you're like my parents are not gonna understand they're gonna judge me they're gonna think I'm crazy it can be very scary to open up to someone about it for the first time or say and come back and say actually I'm still dealing with it or something like that whether it be your family your friends or your relationship but it is so important if these people do not know what you're going through they cannot help you and they cannot be there for you when you are having an emergency all of a sudden you're having a panic attack in your room and they don't even know what's going on like you can't do this alone you need to have people on your side and people who can just be there for you because you never know what's going to happen you know what i mean so at some point you're going to have to just accept it for yourself and say okay i am dealing with this issue and i'm going to have to tell people that i'm dealing with this issue i have to tell at least one person so if you're sitting there right now watching this video and you're struggling and you haven't told anybody i want you right now to sit there and think about who can i tell who can I really tell? Maybe I don't really want to tell anyone, but if I had to choose, who can I tell? And I want you to work on talking to that person. Someone said, would I ever consider actually going to a real therapist or who do I talk to when my anxiety and depression is flaring up? So like I said, I have actually been to therapists multiple times before. I've been to counselors, I've been to different ones, different types, and it does help. It just helps to have someone to talk to, especially someone who is just, an outsider they're gonna have an unbiased opinion and so it's like I can just vent to you I don't have to deal with any judgment coming back from you because you're basically a stranger so that definitely does help and I do recommend it but you just have to find the right one for you because all therapists and all counselors are not the same so I have done that in the past I haven't done it recently because I find that I can get enough of that therapist or like counselor feeling from just talking to loved ones so the main person that I always turn to is my mom number one that's like a given and then my best friend so those are two people that I know I can talk to that are not going to judge me that if I just need to vent or have someone to bounce off of I can always turn to my mom and my best friend so someone said what are the signs of my depression that I notice and does it come in seasons so I definitely do have signs of my depression and anxiety like I know when I'm about to start feeling really bad I know when it's about to like flare up um, and basically that's any time that I start feeling very hopeless and lazy like basically like oh it doesn't matter if I do that or not like I don't feel like doing that I'll just do it tomorrow or actually I'm just gonna cancel that project or actually I don't want to go to this actually I don't want to do this I don't want to do that I rather just stay home and watch videos stay home and do nothing or just stay home and play with Zaya like when I find myself being very unmotivated and very anti-social and just lazy and just feeling like everything's hopeless nothing matters I might as well just sit here and do nothing that's when I know that my depression is bad that's when I know that I need to do something about it or whatever and I struggled with that feeling so bad towards the end of my college career that that's when I started failing my classes and I almost didn't graduate because it just literally makes you feel like nothing matters I'm just gonna lay in bed and do nothing and it's not really because you actually are lazy and you're just a terrible lazy slob but it's because you genuinely feel like who cares like nothing's gonna change why should I even get up and show my face to the world why should I even get out of bed like my life is worthless so I'm not gonna do anything like it just gives you this really really dark hopeless worthless feeling and then she said does it come in seasons and definitely for me it it like seasonal depression is a real thing so in the winter months when it starts getting darker and colder outside you have less sunlight shorter days 
that can really flare up your depression just because simply like it looks like a bad mood outside so it's going to put you in a bad mood in the summertime when it's all bright and sunny and it's good weather and you want to go out and go to the pool that really helps your overall mood and then there's also kind of just seasons of life so you might be going through a certain season of your life like this is the season of me being a senior and i'm just trying to graduate and i'm just trying to get to the next season of my life so when i was in my senior season that was a very hard time for me as well as compared to my freshman season when I'm like, oh, I'm a freshman. This is new and cool and exciting and I'm at a new place. It wasn't as bad for me compared to my senior season. And then I see a lot of questions about just coping and being able to get up and keep moving and keep going when you have a child or when you have a lot of responsibilities or work to do. Because like I said, depression can easily make you just wanna lay there and do nothing and feel like everything is pointless and worthless. Um, but obviously if you have a child, if you have responsibilities, you cannot do that. Otherwise your life will crumble apart. So for me, it actually has really helped me. Having Zaya has been the best thing that has ever happened to me because that is one responsibility that I will never ignore, that nothing can come in front of my own child. And that's just my own motherly instinct coming through. And I think that happens for a lot of women is like, your baby comes first and foremost, like it's just a, a fight or flight instinct that you have. So even when I'm feeling depressed, even when I'm like having an, I, there's been times when like I was having an anxiety attack, but like I'm still getting up and making bottles through it because it's like nothing's gonna stop me from taking care of my child. So for me, that has been really good and hasn't been as much of an issue because that's something that I'm just always gonna do no matter what and always gonna push through. If anything, I'm always gonna push through for Zaya. Now when it comes to my work and filming videos and answering emails and getting out and going to this and going to that, those things I definitely will ignore and um, let fall to the wayside. But I think when it comes to other responsibilities like work and stuff like that, and you really feel like you just can't get up, you just can't do it, but you know you need to, but you really feel like you can't, that's when you just need to take time off for yourself. Say, hey, I need to take the week off or I need to do this. What, however you can do it, if you need to take a couple days off to go see a counselor, go see a therapist, you, you can't just like keep going and expect anything to change. Like you need to stop, take time off, help yourself, then get back to work. So someone said, how do I explain or how did I explain my anxiety or depression to my family member or parents and i get that question a lot because i feel like especially a lot of young people are struggling with the whole thing of like trying to talk to their parents about it trying to get their parents involved trying to open up because i know some people's parents they're just not i don't know maybe they're not as educated on it or they've never experienced it before they never dealt with it before they didn't ever hear about it growing up so they're just kind of like what like what are you talking about i know sometimes unfortunately people's parents are like telling them like you're crazy it's on your head just forget about it and they're very dismissive which is horrible and very unhealthy and i hope that you guys don't have to deal with that but if you do that's when i would say okay well your parents are not going to be the ones to help you but there are other people out there who can help you but in terms of telling your parents it, it's hard it's still hard to this day to this day i don't feel like they really fully understand or like i fully articulated what it feels like what i'm going through because it can be so hard to put it into words whether you're talking to your parents or someone your own age or anyone else it can just be so hard to put it into words and you feel like no one understands you like they don't get it but basically you just have to try your best try your best to explain it tell you know open up tell them your secrets tell them exactly what you were thinking tell them you know get nitty gritty and dirty with it because i know some things it's kind of like dang i don't really want to say that out loud i don't really want to tell them exactly what i thought in that moment you might be having suicidal thoughts or something like that and you're like do i really want to tell them that tell them tell them down to the detail what you were thinking what you're going through what it felt like what it physically felt like what it felt like in your head what it made you think how it made you act the next day like just try to explain the whole thing and that's really all you can do and that's basically what i did and what i do just so that they can know what you're going through so someone said what is the downside of taking medications like prozac or any medication that i've been on i've been prescribed medication i want to say there it's been twice that i've actually been recommended or prescribed medication for depression or anxiety uh the first time i really don't remember what it was but i didn't do it I've, I've always just been the type of person who's scared of medication kind of like i don't really like the idea of 
taking a pill every day or having this artificial thing being pumped into my body every day like it just doesn't seem right or natural to me and so I try like I'm the type of person I don't really even take Advil or Tylenol most of the time like I will try other methods first so definitely the first time that it was like oh you should take this medication i was like mm, no thank you and then the second time when it had gotten really bad and i had actually went to the hospital they were like no you have to take this medication basically and they gave it to me and i was like okay well they're saying that this is like what i need to do and i think i took like one dose of it and then i was just like no like this doesn't feel right i don't want to do it so i chose not to take that medication i don't even remember what it was but it, I, it was some sort of you know mood suppressant or whatever you call it so that's when i just started taking um natural supplements instead and it was the bad side with so the bad side with medication is i mean there's lots of bad sides with medication you could look at all the side effects and different health problems that they can cause trying to fix one health problem and it's just not natural like i said but again i'm not a doctor <laughs> There's other people out there who do really find a lot of relief from taking medication and don't really have that many side effects. So it just depends. Like it's not like medication is all bad, but for me, it's just not my choice. But when it came to taking the natural supplements, it's not like just all in one in one tiny pill that you take every day. It's like you have to take a supplement for this, for this, for this, for this, because it's all like separate. And they're like these huge horse pill, like vitamins, like you know those big stinky, like they smell bad, those big old powdery vitamins, or it might be in like a big old gel cap thing. It was like 10 different supplements and they were all huge like this. And it was like, you had to take two of these, three of these, four of these, three of these, and they're all like natural supplements to help with different, I don't know exactly, but to help with different, like let's say something like iron, different levels of iron in your body or different levels of this or that, that you might be low on that could actually be affecting your mood. So it goes along with the same thing as diet. If you have a really bad diet, it could be affecting your mood or your mental health. So like taking these supplements would be to help with all of those nutrients, vitamins and minerals that you're missing out on, which can actually help with your mood. So I was, she was like, you're missing out on this nutrient, this vitamin, this mineral, you need to bump up with this, 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 and this. And it's all natural and it's all things that my body naturally needs. But in order to get it, you have to take so many of these giant supplements that I literally had like 27 <laughs> supplements that I would have to take in one day whenever it was really, really bad. I'm not good when it comes to swallowing pills. Ever since I was pregnant, I like developed this thing where like I can't swallow pills anymore for some reason. And it was torture because those pills, they smell bad, they taste bad, they're huge, they're hard to swallow. They just made me want to gag it right back up. There were several times where, like I could not take the pill because I was instantly throwing it right back up. And so that is the reason why I don't currently take all the supplements anymore, although I probably should, and it probably really would be helping me. And then there's like liquid versions of some of them, like vitamin D. Vitamin D is a big one when it comes to anxiety, depression, especially depression, I think. And so I couldn't take the vitamin D pills. I was throwing it up. So she's like, okay, here's a liquid. You can just drink the liquid. That tasted even worse. It made me throw up even more. So I just really struggled with getting the supplements down. But if you are better with taking pills and stuff like that, I would definitely look into natural supplements. Also, if you just eat a really, really healthy, really balanced diet, you probably won't have to take all of those supplements. So I think the last major topic that everyone is kind of asking about is postpartum depression and how this all ties into me being pregnant, being a new mom and having a one year old now. Um, and for me, I didn't really necessarily, I don't think I had postpartum depression because postpartum depression I know happens I think usually between like right after you give birth and maybe like the first six months is when you'll definitely notice if you have it or not. And for me, the first six months after Zaya was born, I was actually doing very well. Yes, I was very stressed out as a new mom. I was sleepy. I was nervous about being a new mom and stuff like that. And I think I had all of those normal feelings of just being a new mom. But in terms of like really bad postpartum depression or anything like that, I really didn't have those symptoms like honestly i was so just in love with zaya and so happy to have her and so happy to be a mom that it really lifted my mood although there was different bullshit that i was dealing with at the time and lots of stress and just personal issues and drama that i was dealing with after she was born still like 
just having her there really brightened my mood so i'm very thankful for that and that's been something that has been really good for me so yeah i don't think i really had postpartum depression but i still have depression like i still i've always said that i feel like you know i'll always have depression and i know that's kind of a negative thing that i probably shouldn't say but just with me being realistic i don't think of depression as something that has like a cure to it where it's just like one day you wake up and you're like oh i never will deal with this ever again like i think it's something that's kind of always in your back pocket but you have to have coping mechanisms and you learn to deal with it and you learn to have a happy successful life through it but yeah so when it comes to anxiety and depression directly related to me being a mom and having a baby and my daughter I don't really have that. The thing that can and definitely does and definitely has set off my anxiety. I feel like I say the word anxiety and depression so many times in this video. I'm getting tired of saying those two words. But the thing that does set it off in relation to me being a mom is the fact that you guys know that I'm single. I'm a single mom. I'm not with her dad. Like that whole side of things, the whole parenting the whole trying to do the co-parenting, that that whole story that you guys know I don't talk about is what can really set me off and make me depressed, make me anxious, make me stressed, make me sad. But just me and Zaya over here, like it's fine. So hopefully that makes sense. And again, when it comes to that part of it, I use my same coping mechanisms. I try to avoid drama at all costs or just, you know, remove yourself from negativity. And I try to do things that help me calm down, put me in a better mood, talk to people who do care about me, talk to people who are gonna listen to me, talk to my mom, my best friend, watch my funny videos, shove a handful of ice in my mouth if I need to calm down and breathe. You know, I use those same coping mechanisms that I've been talking about throughout this whole video for that issue as well. And, but it's just an everyday process because it's like you never know what's gonna happen. You never know how things are gonna change over time and there might be a new trigger or something else that goes wrong or whatever. And so you kind of just have to be ready with your coping mechanisms to get through moments like that. But like I said, luckily enough for me, actually being a mom and having Zaya is actually a coping mechanism. It's my release. It's something that makes me happy. Yes, it is hard being a mom. It's hard being a single mom. It's hard, you know, dealing with the one year old sometimes. And there's times when I get frustrated with her and she's acting out or she's being fussy and I feel stressed out and tired and sleepy and oh my gosh. But that's just being a parent. Like, it doesn't matter who you are, or who your kids are, you're gonna struggle with those things as a parent anyway. And they're only temporary, and most of the time, it's a positive, fun, love filled experience. And I know you guys really want me to go into more detail about being a single mom and the whole parenting side of things because I got a lot of questions coming from people who are like, hey, I'm not with the father of my child. I'm in a huge, you know, drama situation with the father of my child and that is what's making me depressed. That that is what's causing my panic attacks. And you know, can you talk about, you know, more of your experience with that to help me with my experience? And again, you guys know I don't talk about that. I don't go into detail about my situation. I don't talk about Zaya's dad. I don't put information out there. Um, and that's just been my personal choice, like I said, for multiple reasons. And so I know that you guys want me to go into more detail because you need advice for your like same situation. Um, and again, I wish I could help you and I wish that it would be that easy just for me to like say everything and give you guys advice. But I don't know, it's just, I can't do that right now. But what I will say is obviously what you guys already know is that no, I am not with the father of my child. I have not been with him the entire time and we're not on good terms and we're not friends and we're not, we don't have this fairy tale co-parenting situation whatsoever. And it's not been an easy process with that whole subject at all. It's been a lot of drama, a lot of stress, a lot of negativity, a lot of just negativity. That's what I'll say. So yes, that has um, caused me issues with anxiety, with depression, with being a parent in general. But again, I just use my same coping mechanisms that I would use for anything else. And I work through it day by day. And um, I just do the best that I can. And I try to focus on 
being a good mom basically you know focus on things that i can control that's a word of advice for any type of issue that you're dealing with is a lot of times you're freaking out about stuff that you cannot control or you're upset about stuff that you cannot control you're upset about what somebody else is doing you can't make anybody else do anything you have to focus on what you can control you can control your own feelings your own actions your own goals your own priorities your own schedule throughout the day like anything that is your choice focus on that and do the best you can with those things and make the best out of those things and try not to even worry about other outside factors that you can't do anything about but for me that definitely is really hard to do um, i struggle with that a lot i always have to tell myself like it's out of your control it's out of your control just let it go so i put a lot of energy into my job my business being a youtuber making videos you know focus on being successful focus on um adding a new aspect to my brand or whatever focus on being a mom focus on zaya focus on teaching zaya something new or anything like that so i definitely think like finding a hobby or a new side hustle or something else for you to put your energy into something that can be your baby if you don't have an actual baby or even if you do have an actual baby something that you can put your all into that you can control that's yours like you know a new business or a new blog or a new even if it's a garden in your backyard something that you can create and control and put your energy into and maybe when you're having a rough day or a panic attack you can go and do that thing instead um i think a lot of people get stuck in their daily routine they go to school they go to work they go home they go to school they go to work they go home and they feel like well that's all i have time for maybe it's not bringing them a lot of joy or a sense of release you probably need to add something else in like i said a garden a blog or whatever some other hobby that you can pour positivity into and that can also serve as a distraction whenever you are going through a tough time and again a lot of people say well i don't have time i don't have time i don't have time you have to make time you have to make time because honestly just the simple fact that you're sitting here watching this youtube video right now technically you have time so yeah a lot of times with these issues it's not so much about trying to erase the issue trying to cure it i just don't want this in my life anymore sometimes that's not an option that's not possible you need to work around it you need to be productive and successful around it you need to find happiness around it yes i always have this thought or this feeling in the back of my mind or in my back pocket like i say but i can walk around with this depression in my back pocket and nobody really has to know that it's there. I can still be productive. I can still do the things I want to do. I can still enjoy my life. Yes, I have this in my back pocket and sometimes it likes to come out and creep out, but I can deal with it and I can work around it instead of just putting all my energy into like trying to destroy it and delete it. Like sometimes it just doesn't work that way. And everyone is different. People's bodies and minds are going to react to things different. Everyone has a different situation. Some people, like I said, they have PTSD. They have very specific traumas, very specific triggers. So everyone's going to be different. My story is not going to align with your story completely ever. Um, and my experience is not going to align with your experience. But the main thing is to be open minded and be willing to try different things, different techniques, different counselors, different therapists. If you want to try medication, if you want to try a supplement, if you, you try talking to this person, try talking to that person, like it's a constant everyday cycle of just like trying different things and giving life a chance, giving yourself a chance, making yourself a priority and you know not giving up on yourself and just sitting there laying in it and say well no one understands me no one can help me i'm just gonna sit here and deal with it myself i'm just gonna sit here and be depressed like you have to get up and try and you know don't compare yourself to others don't let other people compare you to others don't let other people make you feel worthless or stupid or crazy or whatever like you have to understand this is very personal to you it you don't know how long it's going to take you to get over something you don't know how many tries you're going to have to do this or how many different therapists you're going to have to see so you have to understand that you know yourself better than anybody else and for anybody else to judge you and tell you that you're crazy or you need to do this or you need to do that and they're just they don't even know what they're talking about they're just judging you 
don't listen to them. This is personal to you. This is your journey. This is your issue to work through. Yes, there are going to be people around you who are actually there to help. But for those people who are just there to judge you and tell you that you're crazy, you're dramatic, you're this, you're that, remove them from your life. I mean, honestly, that's another big thing is removing negative people, people who are not helping you, people who are making it worse from your life, even if it is a family member or someone that you used to be very, very close with. I feel like struggling with depression, anxiety, any type of mental health thing that can make you feel sad and low about your life also can come with a lot of guilt about feeling that way because I often beat myself up for feeling low because it's like I tell myself, you have no reason to be sad. You have no reason to feel low. Look around you, look at everything that you have. Look at all this positive stuff that you have. Think of all the people in the world who are starving and homeless and have no legs and no... <sighs> but yeah, I just like, I start thinking about, you know, all the people in the world who have it worse than you and you have no reason to be feeling low. You have no reason to be depressed, blah, blah, blah. I, I struggle with telling myself that all the time and beating myself up. It doesn't help me. It doesn't make me not depressed. It doesn't make me go, oh yeah, girl, you're right. I just won't be depressed anymore. Like it doesn't work that way. It doesn't help anything. It just makes me feel even worse because now I'm feeling sad and now I'm feeling guilty for feeling sad on top of this. So it's, it doesn't do anything positive for me or anyone else to tell me that. And it's also not really true because really and truly you cannot compare your life, your experiences, your struggles to anyone else. If you don't know what it feels like to be me, you don't know what it feels like to be me, point blank. I don't care what you're struggling with. It has nothing to do with what I'm struggling with. We are all separate people living separate lives with separate experiences and separate childhoods. Like you can't judge the next person. You can't compare yourself to the next person, whether it be positive or negative. And again, if you have other people around you who are telling you that and dismissing your feelings and making you feel guilty and like trying to make you feel guilty, again, you have to just remove that negativity from your life. I think I said this before that like depression or anxiety is not a reason to be unthankful. Um, you should still be thankful for everything that you do have. You should still be grateful for everything that is going right, everything that you can be happy about because nine times out of 10, it's not gonna be your whole life that's horrible. It's not gonna be everything that's going wrong. You, you, you most likely are gonna have things in your life that you can be happy about, that you can be thankful for. So focus on that and always be thankful for those things. Anxiety and depression is not an excuse to just be a brat. So you have to take time out to say, okay, I'm thankful for this. This thing this thing is going right I am happy about this I am happy about that I think a big thing is to you know remove this stigma remove this whole taboo thing stop making it seem like people are crazy and people are weird and you're some crazy alien because you say you're depressed or you're having this panic attack like stop that like it's 2017 we should all be educated enough to know that these things exist these things are real, um, they're important topics, like you should take them seriously and you shouldn't judge people or make fun of people because of it. And if you do have these issues, you're definitely not alone. You are so not alone that like you'll be surprised to find out how many people struggle with these same type of issues. Anybody can struggle with these types of issues no matter what kind of background you come from, no matter what kind of family you come from, no matter how much money you have, no matter what job you have. So I just say all that to say, don't feel like you're alone. Don't feel like you're a crazy person, alien, a weirdo. Maybe just because you feel like none of your friends or people around you or family members deal with the same stuff, that doesn't mean that you're the only one. There could be people in your city at your school that you just don't know that they're dealing with the same stuff so you're not alone okay so now i'm just gonna put on these lashes with this mascara these are the ilure number 126 okay so i'm back and um we just got real dramatic real fast for some reason i put on those lashes and then i went ahead and put on this lip combo which is this ColourPop 
pencil in the color freaking frack and then this Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid lipstick in the color poet but anyway this is my finished makeup look and I think that was everything I wanted to say on this topic I know that I could sit here and talk about this and answer a lot more questions I could probably make like a six hour video about this topic um, but I guess I'll just try to keep updating you guys and keep making videos like this um, I'm sorry if I did not answer your specific question but I tried to touch on as many things and give as much advice as I could give of course everyone's situation is different and I do definitely suggest that you talk to a professional talk to a doctor talk to your parents figure out what your specific problem is and get help for that problem everyone is different so you can't just take what I say but hopefully something that I did say did help you in some way and yeah I'm going to probably do my hair and take some pictures for the gram and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got something out of it. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you are new to my channel and you made it all the way to the end of this video, don't forget to subscribe and that's everything. So I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.